Hey watercolor wizards, Hajra here. Today we'll be creating a faux stained glass artwork. I've done versions of these in the past in ink and watercolor, and today we'll be using alcohol markers and watercolor pencils instead. Thanks for parking your brushes here and let the epic art adventures begin. I'm sharing a shorter version of this demo publicly on YouTube that'll still have a decent amount of info, but if you're a $7 patron, then you're watching an in-depth, leisurely, almost real-time version with lots more information and instruction. Plus, you'll get all my new, longer, private YouTube videos, free passes to my six previous Skillshare videos, along with many other info-dense, deconstructed art and Q&A post video notes and sketch downloads. My original sketch download for this quill project and others are on my Patreon so patrons can follow along. As far as supplies go, for this project I used clear alcohol blending markers, and they're basically just called clear blenders if you buy them. Also, I did my sketch in HP Pencil and then used a waterproof black SIG writer marker over that, and that's what you're going to see in the quill drawing already done. And I'm also using Albert Durer Faber-Castell watercolor pencils in this case, and all of this is going to be on translucent thick Canson Vitalon vellum that is amenable to ink, pencils, and alcohol markers. It is a translucent surface and not an opaque surface, so once you do matte and frame it, then you're going to probably want to put a support behind it of like white foam core or white board so that it only has a sturdier surface in the back, but also so it's opaque and the colors show up brighter. So I'm starting with a dry watercolor pencil and just coloring that in like you would with a normal dry pencil. You can actually just leave this dry if you wanted because a watercolor pencil or regular color pencil both work really well on this Vitalon vellum because it's such a slick smooth surface and you can continue to build up layers with color pencils or dry watercolor pencils and that would work fine too. But dry media is not my favorite. It's pretty hard on my hands so layering a lot of dry media is not really something I really want to do. And I also just love the free flow of wet media so much when I'm using watercolor pencils, I'll find a way to wet them somehow. In this case, I'm going to be using an alcohol marker. And it is going to have this translucent sort of glassy effect once it's gotten wet with that alcohol marker, because especially on this slick paper, it makes for a really cool effect. And it's not going to be as interesting in its wet and wet effects as you get with water, because there just isn't that much fluid there when you're using an alcohol marker but your paper also doesn't buckle with this marker at all, so it is a fast and convenient and different technique to try. I wanted a cleaner look, almost less artistic, in this case for this actual piece, because this is going to be a crib sheet, a reference for a real stained glass artist who is going to be basically collaborating with me and taking my original California quail and California golden poppies design that I drew up and I'm now coloring, and he's going to turn it into a real stained glass piece. Now I have joint hypermobility issues, which means I'm so flexible and that's why that's giving me pain and injury. I'm assuming that if you have any kind of hand pain, whether it's arthritis or JHS like mine or anything else, that dry media is not going to be your go-to. So if you want to do this entire piece in an ink and wash style with watercolors and only do the ink outlines in ink, then that's a great way to do it. That's how I've done faux stained glass pieces in the past and I'm only doing it this way really because I'm providing a crib sheet that is clearer and simpler for the artist to look at as a reference when he creates the design. I'm also going to be teaching a California scrub jay class in August at the Santa Cruz Museum of Natural History so you can check out my previous video on that and also my post on Patreon and also if you're around here I hope you can make it to this class because it's super affordable and it's going to be fun. Because my mom only allowed us to use color pencils between the ages of when I was in kindergarten to the 8th grade, and we didn't have any real paint projects in school for high school, I only took a few graphite pencil drawing classes in high school. We didn't actually have any painting classes offered at my high school. So I had to wait till I was all done with college and grad school when I was 23 to even begin painting with wet paints and actually own real wet paints since I definitely didn't have any painting assignments when I was studying for my physics and history degrees either. So as a result of all of this, um, waiting to get those wet paints and, you know, which started with my mom's like sort of irrational fear of wet media, ruining her clean carpets and walls in her really clean house, and all the color pencils I had to endure using for all of the art assignments that we did have from kindergarten to the eighth grade, I actually don't care for dry pencils at all as a medium, even to this day, because of all of that. Even if there was no pain issue with my health, I still would because of this history with my mom making us use color pencils for all those years. I just don't like color pencils at all. And if you enjoy them, then that's great. You probably have had totally different experiences with them. You weren't probably made to use them. So that's probably why you're enjoying them. 
Now I just prefer to only use wet, free, flowing paint because it really makes me feel like the art that I'm doing is, I don't know, more painterly and real art and also more fun for me. So that's just a strange and odd anecdote about how you, you know, you might have different reasons for preferring different painting mediums and art mediums. Because, you know, some of it's going to be your preference for what the outcome is going to look like for a particular piece or for your style. Or you're going to have it dependent on your personal limitations, whether or not you can use a medium if it's difficult or whether you have health or pain limitations like I do. And on top of that, you're probably also going to have other reasons like your own personal history and memories with mediums, you know, whether it's being made to use stuff for having something being rare or not, you know, it's going to affect eventually how your dial and your mediums come together with what you're using as an adult. I'm going to be putting the background down in just one solid color, a big piece for the blue sky, another big piece for the greenish ground, and a big orangish circle border. And I'm going to let the stained glass artist divide and choose where he's going to make divisions based on the glass pieces he has, what structural integrity he's going to rely on for this entire piece, and also what balances of fragments and lead lining lines that he's going to prefer. So I'm going to let that be something that he gets to choose. Well, wizards, I hope you enjoyed a new way of creating artwork that emulates stained glass, this time with clear blender markers that have rubbing alcohol as an ingredient and some watercolor pencils. If you're watching the shorter version of this video, it's the public one on YouTube. If you're watching the almost real-time version, then you're a $7 patron with access to the full leisurely demo with lots more info and instruction for this project via a private YouTube video link on my Patreon. Please like, comment, and check out my website dashboard for easy access to all my online platform links on a single page to support my art creation and instruction. Thanks for parking your brushes here and wishing you all epic art adventures.